Hello, I'm here with Dr. Idair Chang. She is Assistant Professor of Pediatric and Internal Medicine at University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, Texas. She is Research Program Director of the Dallas Eosinophilic Esophagitis Program at Children's Health and the Pediatric Team Leader of the UT Southwestern Esophageal Diseases Center. We're here today to discuss her recently published article entitled Obtaining Adequate Lamina Propria for Subepithelial Fibrosis Evaluation in Pediatric Eosinophilic Esophagitis. The authors are Jason Wang, Jason Park, Rong Huang, Rhonda Souza, Stuart Speckler, and Adair Chang. This study was conducted at Children's Health in Dallas, Texas. EOE is a chronic condition involving eosinophilic inflammation of the esophagus. And with ongoing inflammation, this leads to esophageal fibrosis and remodeling. And we suspect that serious complications of EOE, such as food impaction and possibly mucosal tearing are likely related to fibrosis. So knowing whether a patient has fibrosis in his esophagus can really impact how we counsel the patient and manage the disease. Now in adults, the signs of EOE remodeling can be quite obvious with endoscopic fibrostenotic features such as rings and strictures. However, in children, we often see only inflammatory features. And so assessing for early evidence of esophageal remodeling can be quite challenging. Now, while endoscopic pinch biopsy specimens reliably sample the esophageal epithelium, the remodeling takes place in the deeper subepithelial layers of the esophagus, that is the lamina propria. And it might be beyond the reach of standard endoscopic biopsy techniques. So in the past, several EOE uh, studies have um, attempted to evaluate fibrosis in EOE children, but they were limited by the absence of tissue from the lamina propria. Um, prior to this study, we hadn't been paying much attention if lamina propria were even present in biopsies from normal esophagus. So we wanted to determine um, how often a single esophageal biopsy contained lamina propria, and if so, whether there was fibrosis. We evaluated both pediatric EOE cases and pediatric cases with normal healthy esophagus and performed a per biopsy specimen analysis on a total of 371 esophageal biopsy specimens. Our study added quite a bit of new information to the EOE field. First, most esophageal biopsies were inadequate for assessing fibrosis. Overall, only 40%, uh, 42% contained adequate lamina appropria. Now, surprisingly, the rates of procuring adequate lamina propria were similar in the EOE cases versus control cases, suggesting that the presence of eosinophilic inflammation does not seem to enhance our ability to procure lamina appropria as we had initially hypothesized. Now, second, the majority, about 85% of our EOE patients already had evidence of fibrosis. Many were newly diagnosed with EOE, or did they, they didn't have any fibrostenotic features on endoscopy, suggesting that fibrosis can occur, occur early in the disease. And then third, among those um, EOE patients with fibrosis or EOE cases with fibrosis, the esophageal fibrosis was patchy along the esophagus. In other words, within a single level of uh, case, um, some biopsies might demonstrate fibrosis and others demonstrate normal lamina propria. However, we did find that fibrosis was more likely to be detected in the middle or distal esophagus compared to the proximal esophagus with an odds ratio of 19.9 and a 95% confidence interval of 4.1 to 91.5, suggesting that the middle distal uh, portion of the esophagus might be more prone to fibrogenesis. And lastly, the probability of detecting fibrosis re reached greater than 95% with seven biopsies from the middle distal esophagus. Thus, to reliably detect fibrosis in an EOE patient, our study suggested taking at least seven biopsies from the middle or, and or distal esophagus. Our study is a retrospective study that reflects the different biopsy sampling practices of 17 attending pediatric gastroenterologists and six pediatric gastroenterology fellows. So some endoscopists turned their scope into the esophageal mucosa to achieve a perpendicular orientation for the biopsy forcep. Others placed the biopsy forceps tangentially on the esophageal mucosa. And then some may even apply suction to draw the mucosa into the biopsy forceps. Now, in a real-world setting, endoscopists are likely using different techniques to take esophageal biopsy, much like our pediatric GI practice in this study. 
So we speculate that optimizing sampling practice techniques, such as turning the scope into the mucosa or applying suction, um, and the selection of biopsy forceps might enhance laminopropria appropriate procurement. Thus, a perspective or any kind of perspective study where we standardize biopsy sampling protocols are needed to confirm our results and establish further practice guidelines. I think our study has illuminated some exciting findings and I look forward to the discussion and feedback in our GI community. And hopefully it will inspire readers to pursue additional research questions so that we can move this field forward.